Okay, so this is the uh, 10th annual Toy Fair Low Budget Huddle, and um, the goal is that we've all just experienced this whirlwind of new products and innovation, but we're trying. To, we're now in the assimilation accommodation stage. We're trying to figure out what it all means because we all have to go back to our outlets and write the best possible blog post. We don't primarily don't want to miss any key things. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do is uh, just quickly have, go around, let the camera get everybody on camera, say who's here. If you don't want to say anything, just say pass. And um, if you've got any, either a question, if you've come to listen, or if you've got a, um, um, a trend, a key trend that you're seeing this year at, at Toy Fair. And if you want to, like, all right, let's just get started. Um, hey, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, you just missed all the legal stuff. Everything that's said <laughs> here uh, becomes property of us, the, the 360 kid. <laughs> Almost everything I say is. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's let's go this way with Amy. All right, um, Amy Kraft, Media Macaroni. How are you? Um, I think I'm just tuned into it this year because my daughter, who's four and a half, is very science driven. You know, she loves dinosaur trains, she wants to be a paleontologist, she watches the science kid, and everything for her is about science. And what I've been encouraged by on the floor is how many companies are doing science, like little affordable science kits, vast science kits that are actually quite expensive, like lots of different things to do. We tried our first chemistry kit at home a couple weeks ago. You know, it's just really nice to see that. Perhaps after all this, there is a business for science, which would be great. Cool. Uh, Bob Wicken and Wick, Jersey Cow Software. I was happy to see that Flexible Flyer is still selling the old standard sled and toboggan. <laughs> it was nice to realize that certain play things never die. Yeah. That is definitely a trend here in Toy Fair. You got the Lionel trains. You got the you know. There's a lot of that traditional toy. I think uh, now Claire couldn't. Claire Green couldn't be here, but she would say that as well. She's always been a, a very uh, strong advocate for the value of play, representational play, and understanding what role that, that takes. So, cool. And then who's holding the camera? Oh, uh, uh, Richard Carey. I'm, uh, I, I, have to, I have to second what, uh, what Wick said. Uh, it was really good to see Flexible Flyer, Lionel, um, uh, erector sets, mm -hmm. you know, some of the classics, but compared to last year, very little in the toy virtual world uh, connection. Yeah, uh, last very, very thin, very thin. Last year was like everything had a connect, uh, you know, code, and this year is like, huh? At least that's where I'm taking. But Renee would know that. Well, there's been fallout in the web area. I mean, there's probably what 300, Scott. There's like 300 websites now for kids yeah, between yeah, two and 14. Yeah, yeah, whoever's yeah. numbers. But uh, I think it's only like the top 10 that are getting 70% of the volume. So there's totally uh, all the bad ones are falling away. Hopefully, will disappear, extinguish, be gone. And uh, with the Engage Expo here too, we've got people who are in virtual worlds over there, you know, talking and trying to drum up some business. So. I'm very curious to hear if there, if anyone has any insights on the virtual. Um, I'm, I'm kind of seeing like virtual world 3.0 now. Mm. Um, one example is uh, Shrek, uh, not Shrek. Um, Cars. Car carfoon, mm -hmm. Cartoon Panda. Oh, okay. Wait, Panda. Kung Fu. Uh, Kung Fu. Kung Fu. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nothing's left. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's left. <laughs> yeah, but ca Cars is a, a great cars example. It's Disney's. not out yet, but it's yeah, yeah. Cars yeah. Online. Yeah. But but check out Kung Fu Panda's World because they have they've um, really done state of the art animation, just out. Um, and um, Katzenberg, uh, the the head of that uh, his office is two doors down from Katzenberg. I mean, it's an ingrown product, and all of the same art and so on. And it's an example of the Webkin's effect where the designers. Uh, eat lunch with the CEO, same cafeteria, it's not outsourced. So, they were uh, at the show? I don't think so. Uh, no, I don't think so. But it's releasing, yeah. Why 3.0 then? Oh, what are you, are you thinking of that? Because it's, it's beyond Club Penguin, and Lane was talking about yeah. that. It's like, you know, everyone knows you can go around and chat, right? But now we're getting into sort of like um, techniques, like everything's now got a guitar hero kind of thing, right? But there's a tournament now. We're getting into more richer social dynamics. In uh, Kung Fu Panda World, you can, um, it, parents can log in and play a, a game, a casual game, and earn points for their child's account. 
Uh, so it's a it's family dynamics. That's really cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. But keep going, Gary. Um, Gary Goldberger, president of Fable Vision, and I, I kind of noticed that there are less uh, virtual worlds, but deeper experiences, which I mm -hmm. think you know, you're talking about, is that the gameplay is actually needed online, or it's a deeper experience for, I take this play and I, it, it goes into the toy. So it seems like yeah, it's a little dual bit more robust. Yeah, thing. it's more robust experience than just, oh, I'm getting a code or a coin. So mm -hmm. that's kind of nice to see. Mm -hmm. You. Hi, I'm Wendy Smolin from Sandbox Summit. Um, one of the things, I, I've been seeing lots of virtual world connections, but I guess they aren't as deep, but it's almost like, whereas last year they would throw that in your face, that was the first thing, now it's just, it's, it's expected. Mm -hmm. So everyone still has these connections, they just, it's just like, you, it's a must have. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like a must have. Almost like it was, you know, this does social interaction or this improves your kids' reading abilities. Now it's, okay, well, here's how they link online. And it's not, it's, it's not a selling point, but it would be a negative if they didn't have it. Uh, Stuart Drexler from Digital Styly. I mean, it strikes me I've been spending my time at the Engage conference as opposed to walking the floor at, at uh, Toy Fair, so I can't speak to what I've seen there. But it strikes me, uh, particularly from the virtual world side, that there's not, it, there isn't a strong uh, connection to on, off, or, you know, online and offline experiences and kind of reaching kids across the various touch points uh, in, a, in a coherent manner. Uh, it seems to me there's a real lack. And as you say, it's, it's, you have to have the online connection, but there's not really any sensible integration yeah, or reason not, for it. That's and the, the, and the integration is the word. Yeah, there's yeah. no unified play experience of a reason for why I want to do this and then do that and go back to the, you know, uh, the, one experience and then the other. Um, I think that's yet to come. Lane spoke about it a little bit in his uh, his keynote yesterday, Lane Merrifield. In, certainly that, that's the aspiration I, uh, I sense from Disney. I don't know whether others are pursuing it and which companies have the commitment and wherewithal to actually pull it off. But that's what would excite me about you know, seeing some, some guys doing that and doing it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Ellen Di Pasquale. I'm representing theonlinemom.com, and I'm really looking at things from an electronic standpoint for the tween rather than the younger, which I know there's a lot of you know electronics readers and you know as you're saying science. Um, so I walked the floor a little today, and you know, I've seen um, the trend there seems to be in the social activity. You know, being able to do things either socially online or whatever electronics is is handheld is being able to do it either in two or groups of two, whether they're battling back and forth or they're, you know, exchanging information back and forth that may or may not relate to something on the web. Are, are you noticing more of a difference in filter chat versus unfiltered chat or, um, you know, is there is there really a connection or is it just hi, hello, you know, what are you doing? The only one that I actually saw was um, it was a social media for kids where you could um, create a profile and it was a bracelet with um, um, buttons of some sort with mm. had numbers on the back. So when I purchase mine, I log on to the website and say it's mine and as I pass it around, everyone logs in and you can see how it travels. So the profile didn't allow an actual picture but it act, uh, allowed an avatar. And then there was a level of monitored communication, which I was um, speaking with someone about earlier. And I'm not, I don't know if that's human monitoring or if there is some sort of technology monitoring, you know, the types of communication, but it, it's similar to like a Facebook, so. Hi, I'm Scott Trailer, founder and chief kid of 360 Kid. One of the things that I noted about this year's Toy Fair compared to last year's was there's a lot less technology product, did you think? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see any major virtual world announcements this year either. Um, I did see technology products that I think were noteworthy. Um, one that caught my eye was a product called GeoPals. Um, it's like a pedometer you wear on your belt. It was a little bit it, reminiscent of iToy's Me Too product. Um, where you collect points to try to change and create healthy behaviors, upload the points, and as the, 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 the booth people told me, immediately get offline. It's all about accumulating points to win product. So it's kind of neat. Uh, on the funky side, Mattel's puppy tweets. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is that? Like last year, I remember there was uh, the camera you could put on your dog that would take a picture every 10 seconds or something like that. <laughs> right. This year, 
they have some device you put on your dog's collar and based on the motion or the barking that this device perceives, it will send out messages to a Twitter account so you can follow your pet online with Twitter. Social media for pets. Uh, I thought that was a riot. It's an interesting idea. And yeah, it, it is interesting. But it's like, it's if it picks up that your dog has moved, it comes up with some random thing. Like, it's they're really lame. It's like, oh, wow, I got an itch. It's like, you know, it would be, to me, it'd be more interesting if it was more like dog moved three feet. You yeah, know, you yeah. got some real stuff, yeah. you know, because uh, it's hard. So, yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, aside from that, uh, you know, I was certainly taken by a company called uh, Gyroscope, which is a, a gyroscope that you could bi- you put inside of a, a bicycle wheel for a child that's learning how to ride a bike, and it balances them. I thought it was brilliant. As, uh, as Amy had pointed out, Amy Kraft of Media Macaroni said, it's very expensive. It is expensive, but if you have multiple children in your family, it might be a good product. Um, Technosource has a Ru- Rubik's Slide, is it? Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that what it's called? Slide, An yeah. interesting twist on Rubik's Cube. I thought that was kind of neat. Um, but, uh, and a small, yeah, uh, a small handful of technology. I didn't see that many. Oh, Swing, motion based product. Oh, he has one. No screen. That was neat. Uh, they were near a geocaching. Yeah. A geocaching company, too. Uh, I, to uh, I don't know a lot about the story <laughs> about that product. We have Duster Magic and geocaches, and I'm going to try to get yeah. one for everybody. Anyway, so that's kind of uh, my uh, my brief overview. Just less tech, but I'm already starting to see some signs that there'll be much more tech in 2011. Thanks, Scott. Can I just add one yeah. second on the, the Rubik slide? The people at that booth said that there's... Um, some research that women from 25 to 45 are now getting more involved with some of that electronic handheld stuff. So the toys are really not just geared for kids anymore. Just as uh, when I was going through there, the woman who showed it to me, she looked at me, she says, do you play? And I said, which everybody should have on their iPhone um, a lot of funny games but I said oh yeah I play flood it and she goes you don't play jewels and she like immediately took it out and you know it's like here the two of us as adults were exchanging what games do we play and you know I became like obsessed with the Rubik's slot right they're saying there's a lot of casual gaming yeah. amongst yeah. that age group of adults now mm-hmm. I had a really profound uh, trend Scott and I just completely lost it but uh, <laughs> dang it um, but anyway I'm Russell Miller from Center for Intentional Media. I'm entirely parasitical. I have. I just came to hear whatever you're saying. You're not parasitical. <laughs> entirely parasitical. You can even say para that word. <laughs> you, this guy. I just. I just really. I just really can't hear stuff. All right. I've actually been working all week on another product, which hopefully will be here next year. Parasite. Yeah. yeah. Well, I rode the geobike. Oh, you rode it. I rode it. Oh, that was. As a unicycle? <laughs> I don't know. You know. It's one of those things, that it's just like, they shouldn't, some things nature shouldn't be tinkered with. Kids need to get skin knees. Um, and I'm not that much of a, I don't know, Renee, if you feel that way, but I, it's so weird. It's like you're riding, you're on a bike that's saying still going 30 miles an hour because there's a, a centrifuge yeah. inside the thing spinning. You also have to charge it with your, this is what they don't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to charge it. You know, it has lithium ion batteries to get that motor going. And the, the one I was riding was a little off sync. So I got on it, it's staying still, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> so, but true, you know, it doesn't nice. like to fall. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. like you try to tilt it, but then the wheel does this weird thing. Huh. So I think that. And then what happens when you get on a real bike afterwards? That's exactly like, right. Yeah. You get skin knees. Well, yeah. You should have been yeah. the first place. I, th- I think that, <laughs> but the thing that I really liked about it is for children that have a fear. You know, because I think some there are certain kids that do have a fear of trying to ride a bike. That I mean, it it removes train, a lot so of that fear. Are for, well, true, but you know, there's also where, where you, you go from? hey, I've got training wheels. My friends don't. You know, they're and they're not pets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So can, can I ask a question yeah. about the 3.0 thing? Yeah. Um, are are the 3.0 um, so, uh, sites that virtual worlds that you saw all linked to existing properties? Because that's what you mentioned: ca- uh, cars and and kung fu panda. But it's like Club Penguin was a new property. Right. So I was mm-hmm. wondering if that if that's changing. No. You're not seeing as many new properties right now because the retailers aren't supporting new properties. Right. Tried and true, economic times, affordability, right. which is also why you're not seeing as many high tech products. Because I mean, think about it. You don't want to put a product out there that's hundred bucks that isn't going to sell because then it's going to be closed out. 
Even though it's a great product, people aren't willing to spend 100 bucks right now. I'm Renee Rice, Toy Trend Expert, Toy Industry Association. I don't think I got my name in before. Yeah. Well, you should. And by the way, who are these people? Just we have some new joiners. <laughs> Just before we the, say, the they talk their way past the guard, so good for you. Oh. <laughs> I'm Jacqueline Cannon. I'm the president of the Jacoby Code. And uh, we were here last year. And exactly what you're saying, you know, we have uh, we decided to take the path. We had two choices. As we were hitting tough economic times, um, and we were going to go to retailers, um, we could finish our development and do our development faster and you know get more money into what we were doing and building our team. So when instead of going down a path of burning cash and being scared that we weren't getting supported by retailers mm -hmm. and consumers by with a $34.95 um, personalized journal and then a $5.95 um, subscription and microtransactions and um, we have um, USB enabled toys that we want to develop as well, that's a, that's a lot to be introducing in 2009. Yep. So we decided to go and say, hey, you know what, we're going to develop a lot more, we're going to have our content ready, we're going to build our team, and, and we'll, in 2011, we'll be better prepared as a company because of the tough times. <laughs> and it's what we're seeing here. We're at the Virtual Worlds Conference and actually didn't even display this year because just the traffic wasn't there and the ROI wasn't going to be here for us because of that. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Nickel, and I'm with Jacoby Code as well. Nice to be here. Hi, I'm Christine. I'm, I'm with Sockeye Media LLC. And I'm Ryan Dune Boston with Sockeye Media. Um, Sona Jo, who some of you probably know, heads of our company, and she asked us to be here today. Just to observe. Good to see you. And? Oh, hi. I'm Andy Thea. Um, I have a toy company called Scribble Max, and we also are creating a web based art community uh, for parents and teachers and little kids called Scribble Town. And make Scribble Mats. Yeah, we make Scribble Mats. All right, good. Can, can I ask uh, Renee a question? Mm -hmm. um, I, I know I, it may have been something that you wrote at um, for the October Toy Show, mm -hmm. where um, if I can quote it correctly, it was um, 2010 will be the year of the 9.95 price point. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and so I mean, I wonder if just that comment says a lot about why we're not seeing technology this year. It's all, all. your fault. No, there's a <laughs> lot of technology that's being developed and it's in R&D right now. I've seen yeah. some of it. I can't talk to it. But people are holding some of that higher technology stuff back until the economy gets a little better because, like I said, you don't want to introduce a great product and have nobody buy it and then have people think it's a dud when it's really a cool product. Mm -hmm. so. I saw much, many fewer products this year also. I mean, even the big showrooms showed, I would say, half of what they showed mm -hmm. last year. I, I think they're being a lot more intelligent or, or cautious um, in what they're putting out there. Let me, um, draw, let me drop some trends. And, um, but two, tr two trends. One is touch screens for kids. Yes. Um, I'm seeing um, VTech, uh, I'm seeing uh, Fisher Price, and I'm seeing LeapFrog. Uh, all came out or coming out in development with touch screen. Now, of course, the Leapster's touch screen been around a long time, but these are Nintendo DS quality screens, mono touch. And the one I'm most excited about was what I didn't expect. It was from VTech, mm -hmm. and it was the MobiGo. Mm -hmm. And it has this uh, pop out uh, QWERTY keyboard. So they actually went backward in technology by giving kids a real keyboard with keys that you can touch mm -hmm. with that touch screen which you can deliver all this developmentally two and three year old experience and shoulder bar um, regular game controller. So any kid picks it up and is going, I know how to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, also, but the big one is the USB. And so um, all of the, all of the, that whole category just shifted this year. That's something that wasn't around last year. Um, there's a, a new generation. None of these devices, to my knowledge, are backward compatible with the old ones. They're cutting with the past. It's all you know fresh, um, and so that's that's pretty interesting. Another thing is Moore's law is continuing to churn away and erode the the rules of commerce and retail. Um, the one toy that I thought captured it most is this watch from Jack Pacific. Mm. Um, it's a spy watch. They're going in a whole line of spy gear. Right. And man, you remember the they had the night vision goggles, yeah. right? Well, they've they've renamed that now. It's called SpyNet, I think. SpyNet. Mm -hmm. SpyNet. Um, 
but so the the uh, core of it is this watch. It's fifty bucks. So what can you do for fifty bucks? It's like Dick Tracy. You can record video. It's AVI video. Um, Twenty minutes of audio or more. I mean, and it's clear. It's it's pretty clear. I, I've I got some video of it. Um, uh, what else can it do? It's a camera, like two thousand still things, and it tells time. <laughs> can you watch the in video? seven languages? It tells time. Yeah, it tells time. Oh. It's a watch. <laughs> That's crazy. Is that <laughs> profound? Uh, and and anyway, so I think uh, that just I couldn't believe it. Just and wait, it does more. Um, it's time. You know, and then and they're releasing it with a pair of sunglasses with reflectors that have no batteries and no tech, mm -hmm. you know, so and you it's kind of... You people behind you. Yeah, so so that toy was like, wow, that, that's pretty cool. Um, so, I, in my opinion, the IXL, it's <coughs> getting all the press, mm -hmm. is about uh, three quarters as good as the, the VTech product. But the VTech product just started their presentations yesterday. Which is so. up. Mm -hmm. What you see, which I, I was seeing more in the younger children's preschool product is, Last year, Air Hogs had their laser gravity um, uh, car, and it followed the laser light, and it got to mm. drive on the ceiling and stuff. Now you've got a Thomas the Tank version from Fisher Price that kids can do it on the floor with just the simplest little remote, and the, the train follows their path. So there's some of that laser stuff going on, and that's simple for a kid to get. Mm. Well, a lot of these products of have hundreds, of, like not hundreds, but like one game will have five to six to seven rules, you know, different ways to play, cooperative play, competitive play, so there's different individual play, team play, group play, so there's all these different ways to play one toy for $20, so that's this affordability thing is coming in a lot of different ways, and I'm delighted by the lower prices. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you go in a showroom and I'm expecting $60, I get 45 yeah. I'm expecting 20 and I get 15 and I'm like, woo, great. I mean, across the board, the major manufacturers have definitely, definitely brought the prices down. It's also robot mania. Um, robots are doing more. I think the doll from Fisher Price, that's the Mickey Mouse doll, is the first one that can, yeah, Dan, can moonwalk for the first time. Um, yeah. So timely. <laughs> yeah. uh, so can Russell. Well, some other things that I think are fun is that there's some, like last year we had the Mind Flex and the Star Wars Force Trainer, the Brainwave games. Now you've got a lot of interactive games with lights and sound, like light beams that you play through, like Loops from Mattel, where they had yes. a product beams over there that you could play the piano and music and all these cool things by just running your hand through these light beams. And I know Chris Byrne was... I saw him yesterday, and he, he reminded me of a trend um, it, with the Scrabble blocks. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, that the computer is the toy now, or you know, it's it, the the, um, the interface. Is, you are the interface. It's you know That's we're wrapping. Mm -hmm. And and another. Um, what is it? Uh, Lane Merrifield at his presentation yesterday said, "Technology is wrapping around us. We are not getting wrapped around." Technology. Exactly. And that's like the, I, I thought that was a, a good statement about how to think about applying the technology to new product. That it should, in a way, be transparent to us. It should not be in the way of the. It should enhance it should the property or yes. enhance the product. And not, I'm seeing much fewer watch me toys. Mm -hmm. So many more interactive toys where the toy randomly does different things based on what you do. Yeah. Some new products that will be coming out yet to be disclosed. Um, when you play with the product, if you play with it in one way, it grows up and interacts in one way. You play with it in a different way, and it has a completely different experience. So depending on the same product, if a kid plays with it differently, pets it more, plays with it more, gives it more food kind of thing. And that's getting it, to that deeper layer of sophistication. Yes. One. Another one is lithium-ion batteries. That watch I talked about has <coughs> lithium-ions for $50 used to be you didn't ever see rechargeable batteries at, at a price point. Um, and so that technology is, is really evolving. I want to introduce Christy Matt uh, from about.com. Hi. Um, and uh, anyone else comes in, let me know. But you, you've got to buy the guard, which is good. I didn't even know there was a guard. Excellent. <laughs> she's media anyway, because she's about.com. Oh, yeah. No, so she course. gets in, okay. media and, badge. Um, 
Um, I'd like to touch back on something Renee was saying about the toys that you can play in different ways, specifically the games. One of the things I'm most excited about this year are the LEGO board games, where you get to build the board, you can build it in different ways, you know. So, you know, one way that it was explained to me yesterday, is like, so while mom and dad are reading the instructions and figuring it out, the kid's busy, like, playing together the board in exactly the way that they want it. And it's just really great. It seemed like such a natural fit. It's like, why hasn't LEGO been in the board game aisle before? It's just seemed great. Yeah, it's interesting. I had a chance to play with the Lego board games mm -hmm. last night, and mm -hmm. you can change out the dice, you can pull off a number and put on a special piece that changes your gameplay, you can change the board around. I agree, the Lego dice were really cool. Yeah, you, <laughs> I, I love that you can so, change it up. What toy or what thing should we see before we leave by this afternoon? What should we all run to go <coughs> and see? Run to the technology area and see this Beams product. It's $199, so not everybody's going to have it. But this light music playing, it's on the 3100 aisle. Yeah, it's that's pretty fun. cool. That's they pretty were cool. At, um, at CES, I they were at CES. Yes, they were. absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. And that that uh, that Loops product from um, Fisher yeah. Price. Oh my There's God, Renee, what do you got here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, you put your iPhone up in the top here. Yeah. Then you can watch it like when you're on the... That makes me dizzy. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So you can watch, if you had your iPhone on here playing, this is a magnifier, so you can watch it big time. Like when you're on the airplane, instead of having to hold your iPhone, you stick it on here and you just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> you look like a geek, yeah. but... <laughs> it's called TV hat. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> it's just kind of fun. Yeah. I have this little guitar here, guitar t-shirt. I like that. Think oh, geek. Yeah. And you turn it on. I'm not going to play it right now because I have to save my batteries for my presentation um, this afternoon. Oh, so it's wearable technology. Wearable technology, but it comes with this um, mm -hmm. great little... Loops. Loops. Yeah. Amplifier, ah. and you just play. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you tuck this on, you, you hook it on, and you... Oh, you can. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't want it to run out of battery. Is, um, Loops is Mattel, $29.99. Yeah. And it looks like um, it's got these big things, and you can... It, it's like Simon. The game Simon. Yeah, that's and there's just, seven yeah. different ways to play. It has a sensor. I was um, it, I was at C it's CES this year. I was walking around looking at like LEDs. You know, I like to sort of think backwards. Let's think batteries and you know light. Okay, how is it being applied in different toys? And so you know, like down on the floor, you'll see LEDs all over the place because they're dropping in price. They're getting brighter. They can change colors and so on. And so um, there's there's things like. LEDs and frisbees and so on, mm -hmm. um, and again, it's sort of enhancing a, a traditional toy. The big, the toy that got the big redesign is Monopoly. It's yeah. the first year that Monopoly, seventy-five year seventy-fifth anniversary. anniversary, and um, and they've added a uh, electronic. So le you need battery, you need double A's. Electronic play. banking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a credit card now. No more money. No so, more counting out cash. I would cash. Miss the fights over who got to be banker. Mm -hmm. That was my reaction to the Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. Like an and then it plays Beyonce. And <laughs> <laughs> it plays yeah, what's music. that about? Yeah, Beyonce Why and music. Monopoly. Oh, man. Actually, um, there was another one that I saw that um, it was a University Games. It was a Brain Quest. And I think this is their 25th anniversary. And they had a game called Smart, which was the five I think it's spelling, math, art, reading, and time and money management. And I thought having that time and money management in it as the fifth thing was just brilliant because mm -hmm. no one's done that before. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it totally there, non -tech. Okay, let, let's think uh, small mom and pops um, startups. Who has the best who, who first year need, of the show? Who do we need to um, blog about? And, and who, de who deserves a, uh, uh, doesn't have a PR firm? I think Drip Drops by Tickle, it's cute. Um, it's um it's all about teaching kids about color. It come there's a DVD that you can get. There's like already 18 books. Where are they located? Um, they're at 3041. Oh my god. Very colorful. Very colorful blue with the rainbow on it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. all the little characters are like in the yeah. shape of a drop of they're water. Adorable. And each one tells a different story. The pink one oh, teaches yeah. kids about the color that pink. The blue one teaches kids about the color blue, but it's not just blue, it's peridot, it's aqua. Um, and there's going to be an S site, and the song is so cute. It's not one of those that gets in your head and you're like, ah. Oh. It's a song that, you know, is is a nice song, and it's going to have a whole program behind. And money goes back to charity. It goes back to help children that are burn victims. Some okay. of the money. There, uh, there was I think it's going to be a breakout property this year. There was a company at uh, Engage Expo called Shadoni where you draw 
an animal, a monster, and you press a button, you submit your design, and it, you pay the fee, which I think was like 80 bucks, and they'll mail you a plush toy based on your design. Okay. Which I thought, and, and the plush, the quality of it was pretty darn nice. No, I have an $8 non-technology toy. That is one of my favorite toys this year. $8. Story Cubes. It comes with nine dice. They're six-sided. They all have little symbols on them. You roll the dice. Whatever shows up, you tell a story with it. Everybody, if you had the same dice, every single one of us, and we all told a story, we would all have a different story. Eight dollars. Really packaging. great, yeah. fun yeah. product. I've been carrying it around. They're at uh, Game Right, which is a division of Seco oh, Games. Right. Love this. Developed by an Irish guy, Rory. Rory's Story Cubes. But um, really cool. Non-technology, but very open-ended play. Pardon? Is it being pitched to grown-ups as well as kids? Yes, absolutely. It's a family game. It's yeah, really all about anyone can play, yeah. everyone wins, because everybody has their story to tell. That's really good. Idea. Yeah. Good we pretty much did. So, I mean, do you have any takeaways? You well, if you haven't heard Renee's uh, four points you, um, of the trends this year, you should. For, you first, you first, you need to introduce yourself. Oh, sorry. I'm Robin Raskin, the founder of Living in Digital Times, where we mix lifestyle and technology, partnering with the Consumer Electronics Association. So yes, we started with kids, but now we do seniors, we do sports and fitness, we do digital health, we do um, higher ed, which if you're not looking at that space and what's happening, um, <coughs> this will be the last generation that, myself included, that spends $40,000 a year to send your kid anywhere because they can just do it at home with the best professors. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on. But I think here, Renee had some four really top level trends. Um, I think the screen time issue is going to heat up a lot this year um, so that parents are going to have an added awareness of how much time their kids are spending in front of screens. Because so of the Kaiser you, thing? Uh-huh. And because of, you know, just general, now that you, they have phones and, you know, this has some, become somewhat ubiquitous. So I think you're seeing a trend here to get kids away from the screen, even when it's using a screen. Swanks, is that the name of Swinks. it? Swinks. Swinks. And the, the Mattel one, the Fisher Price one, the Red Rover. Red Rover. Um, or, or good ex hyper dash 7,000 variations. Yep. And, this, and this said by a woman who had a QWERTY keyboard imprinted on her face because she fell asleep on her keyboard. Oh, God. Is that true, Rob? I had to walk around, really. And I looked like I had a black <laughs> eye, but it was really, if you look close, it was C A. <laughs> um, I mean, is that um, like, that's the biggest compliment on the key. <laughs> It's like you actually have a crust in your body. That's right. cool, Rob. Okay. And, and, and to that end, I do think every app is going to come with a, t especially Facebook, should put a timer in, you know, <laughs> so that you're actually, 15 minutes, I'm done. Whether you're an adult or a kid, we all um, need those kind of reminders. I uh, think the... Wait, real fast. Let me embed a, f a footnote in there because another trend is hooking on to the Facebook and Twitters, like that to yeah, toy. Yeah. That's what yeah. I was trying to say. It's like... Um, you, not a parasite, but, <laughs> yeah. but symbiotic, symbiotic relationship, <laughs> uh, partnering, you know, like an app might make no sense, like that Nanover, they try to reinvent yeah. their own mm -hmm. system, but if they made that for iPhone and used it built in Bluetooth, boy, that could really Smith go. Smith and Tinker. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, so anyway, so linking in and hook, working with Facebook, I think Facebook is a huge yeah. concept. Yeah. All right. Sorry. It's Keep going, going away. I think... Um, I'm hearing actually this really good thing um, about storytelling again, big this year, and away from casual gaming. And um, not that casual gaming isn't good, but you know the magic of the story is coming back, and the story across all mediums. And I think if you heard Lane Merrifield's mm -hmm. keynote yesterday, that was like exclamation point. So. Knowing that um, a good story pervades all these mediums is really important. Can I add something to that? I don't know if you were the panel with the kids yesterday. Oh, oh it's fantastic. They said that they would never spend their own money on a virtual world subscription. It, they have more important things to do with their money, which in a room full of virtual people set the room abuzz. Um, but the kids said that they look for a video game that has a storyline component, and that's very important to them. So, yeah, you know, the, from the mouths of babes, right? That's yeah, true, and you know that was the point I was trying to make with uh, Harry Potter story. As an eight-year-old discovered Harry Potter, that kids know the the stuff, and and the, it's the people who are, 
in tune with kids. Or that's that's where they they know the magic quickly. They vote with their feet. Um, I've got video. I didn't show it in my panel of kids from MediaTek talking to the people who make virtual worlds, and they said these micro payments are they stop them. They were so angry about that whole process. The kids in the panel yesterday were saying the they want to pay a fee an honest fee, mm -hmm. beg their parents for it, and be done with it mm -hmm. because they can't handle this being teased or sick of it. And these, these kids yeah. are getting angry. Hey, Robin, keep going. This yeah, no, 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 no. Except for the one that I found interesting down at Engage was Rickster, the one where you take all your coins and then you can redeem it for a gaming card, you know, um, because that's a currency kids understand and, you know, a, a pocket full of change in a game seems to be fair, uh, fair booty for, for, for kids. Um, what else? My personal faves were the little $60 GPS with every geocache in America mm -hmm. like, put in there, which can, you know, gives your kids a safe way to begin geocoaching and geolocation. 60 bucks? 60, yeah, yeah 60 bucks. Yeah. Um, That's in the, in the Engage? Yeah. It's no, it's the, in the... Um, across the, the 3,100, 3,200 at the end. Right. It's across from Swings. Geo, geopath. On the flip side of that, my scary things were, Scott saw me wear it the other night, the TV in a helmet no. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I... I love it, and it's so frightening. Um, and the little teddy bear that goes onto your shopping cart or your baby carriage, so that your kid can watch um, the, uh, your iPhone with that. Robin, you. that would keep the QWERTY thing off your cheek. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe that. Maybe you need one. Maybe uh, no more get one for every member of the family. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, active play. Imagination back in play. Um, I think these are all really hopeful signs of a maturing industry. Um, the virtual world space, I think it's for a lot of the toy companies, it's just going to be like the cost of entry, like a business card. Mm -hmm. Like you used to have to have a website, you know, when you started a, a business. Well, now you have to have a virtual component to go with it, and it's costly. Um, and that's. Um, mm -hmm going to be. So I think in the virtual world, my guess is you're going to see a lot of mergers and acquisitions and a lot of, um, well, Disney has, what, five worlds in one. Um, and uh, my two favorites, Zeko and the, um, um, oh, that sweet woman, Liz Cronenberger. Elf Island. Elf Island. Elf Island. Um, yeah. They just merged to create a sort of social good experience. So I think you're going to See, there's still promise. It just has to be right sized. Mm. I'm done. <laughs> nice, Robin. No? That was good. That's good. Did anybody see the flip outs? I, I don't like Don't put this oh, up. Yeah. I don't like these little armbands, particularly, but it's a kid company. I did. And they have these little chips that go in so you can customize them with what you want. But what I liked about it is the chips have a code on the back, and you enter it online, and then you swap with a friend. And when they get the chip, they enter it online, so you, they become friends with you online, and then they swap it, and that person enters so you can track where the chip has gone, and sort of you get friended with the people who've had that chip. I don't know if it'll take off, because it's one of those things, if nobody has it, it's no good. But I loved the concept that you get connected with all these people. Um, uh, face chips. Face yeah. chips. Yeah. Clickables. Face chips oh, and clickables. Yeah. yeah, but um, the one, we, remember that little el uh, uh, dwarf or elf or, uh, model? Oh, the gnome? The gnome. The gnome. That you would, it's like a thing in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Is it like mm -hmm. that, where it goes around and you give it sort away of. to somebody? Like the dollar, mm -hmm. you know, where you could track the serial number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. where's George? Where's George? But, it, but it's a social component, so you become friends with the people that your friends are friends with, and that they are friends with, and you're all connected. So, and I don't know how safe it is, like I haven't had time to check it out. That's what I'm saying. The safety part so so is yeah. 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 The issue is supposed to be if a friend space. is giving it right. to you, then you know them. Right. That right. chances are you're not going to give it to a stranger, so then that stranger is not part right. of your network. At least it's that's the thing. It's a Facebook idea. Like that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the four, <laughs> the four key, the Rene Rice Toy Trend Expert Toy Industry Association, the four key trends that I'm talking about here at 2010 Toy Fair are the accessible trend, which is everything about anytime, anywhere access to computers, to your favorite brands, to your lifestyle. So it involves the entertainment trend, blockbuster movies, and all the stuff that ties to that, celebrity, music, sports, anime, whatever it is. But it also ties to 3D games. There's a lot of 3D stuff. There's a little bit of augmented reality coming out. Very 
low. There's not a whole lot of it yet. Topps Trading Cards has it. Um, Mattel's Avatar brand has it. Um, there's a lot to be developed there. I think there's an opportunity. Um, it's um, th e, e connected toys. We, you know, the website toys, which we've already talked about, and the Nanovar we talked about. But that has one of the first dual link technologies, where what you play in the handheld game, you upload to the computer, and all everything that you've earned and learned goes up to the computer, and then everything you earn and learn on the computer goes back into your handheld. So you're constantly growing your knowledge. It's not parallel play anymore. It's add on. It continues to add on, and it's one of the first toys that does that. Uh, Club the Penguin Nanover. has that also. Nanovore. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, by Smith and Tinker. By Smith and Tinker. Um, so the accessible trend yeah, is all about that. Um, a lot of it is electronic and interacting, sharing. But it's a social interaction between families too, getting them together and making sure they're sharing their communications and having fun together. That's the accessible trend. The active trend is active exercise for the body, for the mind, and for the imagination. So exercise for the body is getting kids up and moving. Lots of these RFID technology toys where it recognizes who's won and who hasn't. The Swinx product from uh, the Netherlands also is a great example of no screen time, but the kids can make their own games. And up to 10 kids can play with the wristband. They wear a special wristband. There's exercise for the imagination, which is role play, arts and crafts, construction, and games and puzzles. All categories which don't have a lot of technology in them, which were ones that had single and double digit growth last year in a fairly flat toy economy. And the toy industry was $21.5 billion dollars last year overall. Um, US. In the US. And that's not including video games and accessories. That's separate. Um, the third trend is affordable. So it's all of the economy stuff. So these are four A's. The affordable trend is um, great product that delights in terms of affordability. Um, lots of play value packed in. Um, attention to detail. The action figures are now going down to three and three quarter inch. So there's a lot of uh, um, articulated figures, uh, vehicles that come with them for the price under $20. It's great. The fourth trend is the one I really love and it's aspirational. And there's three components to that. That's um, empowering, teaching kids that they can make choices, they can empower themselves, they can mentor other kids. Um, the green and economy toy or ecological toys, so eco entertainment, eco environment, teaching kids about the environment. There's a game company that after you play with the game, the pieces, you can bury them in the ground, they have flowers embedded in them, and you can grow a garden. So it's truly back to nature biodegradable. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it's the first time we've had a green pavilion here at the fair because 25% of the buyers asked for it last year. And the third trend within Aspirational is giving back to the community. A lot of the toy companies are giving back and allowing children to choose where that giving back money goes, like Carito Kids. You can go online and 3% of the purchase of your product, you can pick where it goes to help children in, get school supplies in a country or you know buy a cow for their community so they have milk, that kind of thing. But kids get to decide and it starts to build in that. So four key trends, active toys for the mind, the brain, and the body, um, affordable toys, accessible toys, and aspirational toys. <laughs> you ought to go on TV. Yeah, no way. Right. Yeah, that's good. You've been doing days of TV. I've been doing days of TV. Yeah. <laughs> so the big Fair. question is, have you changed from last year in those uh, key trends? Yeah, well, in affordable especially. I yeah. mean, truly delightful products in the affordable. And the empowering and aspirational trend has really been kind of bubbling up and emerging as a trend over the last three years, but there hasn't been enough to talk about. Now, it's a lot of companies are embracing this opportunity for choice. I mean, games where it's not just the roll of the die, it's you choose, and what you choose makes a difference for the next step and the next step. It's like Settlers of Catan kind of thing, Dominion. Um, so these Euro games are coming in and being interesting. And then in gaming, there's cooperative play, a lot more cooperative play rules, where you're learning how to have teamwork, that 21st century concept of you know, teaching kids about teamwork and cooperative play. And then the competitive play rules, which is, I call it, winning and losing gracefully, teaching them about those skills, so. Cool. Did anyone talk about the robots? Thing? Oh, but it, the, the robots, it's about play patterns. And I, when I see the talking truck from Fisher Price and so on, it's just like, just taking over the kids' imagination. Mm -hmm. One of the ones is the bath toys from VTech. Um, in one way, from a technology side, I was really excited. Like that, that I was saying, you're putting electrical things in the bath water. <laughs> this is gonna can only be really interesting because I don't know about what you guys were like, but my, me and my brother, we just took things apart. Yeah. Nothing was sacred, you know. 
And so you're putting batteries in there. But they have bubble blowers and all that. But the thing is, VTech is famous for like pushing music and you know, kind of invading that psychological silence. It's so important, right? And I, I could hear Claire and others just going, no, you know, this, do not do this. And with the robots, I'm just seeing so many of oh, those like, that's, right? I agree. But that's they're doing cooler things. They're being obnoxious in more creative <laughs> ways, right? I mean, like, they <laughs> say more. Synchronized like, dancing. Like, 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 yeah. Oh, Mickey Mouse, I thought was so pathetic. I mean, it was unintelligible. All they did is they took the guts from, was that Ro Price? from Elmo and they put it in a new thing. And, but it is more sophisticated. If you graph the number of words, like you can for a child over age, <laughs> that the Tickle Me Elmo has grown in sophistication in servo motors. Um, but um, the point is why? Um, and what does it do for the child? What do they walk away from? I mean, it is a head turner. You look at it as the yeah. Rubik's Cube from last yeah. year. I mean, it goes, oh, cool. Yeah. For at least, that's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, they won Electronic Toy of the Year.